Nikola Jokic. Wow. Talk about avenging the MVP award that was stolen from Nikola Jokic last season. Now he won his third MVP award in the last four NBA seasons. Congrats to Nikola Jokic for pulling off that accomplishment. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about Nikola Jokic owning haters once again by winning another NBA MVP award. Remember, Nikola Jokic was robbed of winning the MVP award last season due to the fact that white players cannot win MVP too many times. At least that's what Kendrick Perkins was saying on ESPN last year as an NBA analyst. Before I say anything else, though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So here it is. Do you agree with Nikola Jokic winning the MVP award this season? For me personally, I don't agree with Nikola Jokic winning the MVP award this season. I understand why the voters chose Nikola Jokic to win the MVP award, but he was personally not my pick to win MVP. In fact, Nikola Jokic probably had a stronger argument to be in third place this year than being in first place. But for me, I had Nikola Jokic in second place. My MVP pick was Shea Gilgis out. Alexander and I understand why the voters went in the route of picking Nikola Jokic for MVP but how could you deny Shea Gilgis Alexander MVP where he was the leader of a young Thunder team that ended up being the number one seed in a stacked Western Conference the OKC Thunder won 57 games with a very young roster in fact the OKC Thunder were the youngest one seed ever in the history of basketball and Shea Gilgis Alexander was a tremendous reason for that happening you look at Shea Gilgis Alexander stats he had incredible stats to his name he averaged over 30 points a game he shot the ball pretty efficiently as well he shot over 50 percent from the field he also made his free throws really efficiently he passed the basketball effectively and he got rebounds he's a solid defender he did a great job drawing fouls throughout the year in fact i would have to say that shake yosh alexander should win actor of the year because of the fact that he was able to draw fouls at such a pretty high rate this man got to average almost nine free throws a game and when you average that many free throw attempts a game that is obviously going to be very beneficial for your basketball team and you also look at how the OKC Thunder were the number one seed in the Western Conference and don't tell me that the OKC Thunder have a stacked roster they have a pretty good roster don't get me wrong I like the young quarter that they have in OKC but that roster in OKC is not number one seed worthy in the Western Conference if it was not for the performance of Shea Gilgis Alexander but back to my point about Nikola Jokic this guy is one of the best players in the world in fact, Nikola Jokic, as of right now, as I'm speaking, is the best player in the world. Now, whether or not Nikola Jokic is going to maintain that title, that remains to be seen. I think Anthony Edwards will eventually take that title away from Nikola Jokic. But as of right now, Nikola Jokic is the best player in the world. And when he doesn't play the Minnesota Timberwolves, he is an unstoppable force. And there is no such thing as a bad game by Nikola Jokic. Because even when Nikola Jokic plays bad, unless if it's against the Minnesota Timberwolves, he's typically playing better than 99% of the players that are on the basketball floor and the crazy thing about Nikola Jokic winning MVP this year is he actually had a worse year this year compared to last season I thought Nikola Jokic got robbed last season you look how Nikola Jokic shot the ball really efficiently last year he shot over 60 percent from the field he shot over 38 percent from the three-point line and he also almost averaged a triple double he basically played phenomenal basketball and was a special player he actually made his teammates better he made Aaron Gordon have a career year with them he made Jamal Murray look like an amazing point guard he made KCP look like a really good three and D guy and Michael Porter Jr. also did a great job shooting the basketball. You look at how Nikola Jokic was an absolute monster last season, but he didn't win MVP over Joel Embiid because Joel Embiid allegedly led the league in scoring. I say allegedly because of the fact that Joel Embiid is one of the most fraudulent MVP winners to have ever won that award in the history of basketball. Joel Embiid is the only MVP winner to have never appeared in a conference finals. And obviously, you look at Nikola Jokic this year, he's actually averaging worse stats across the board outside of points but that's because he's taking more shots but Nikola Jokic somehow found a way to win MVP even though his assists have gone down and even though his shooting efficiency has gone down and more importantly the Denver Nuggets weren't even the number one seed in the Western Conference now the reason why I think the voters wanted to give the benefit of the doubt to Nikola Jokic was because of the fact that he got robbed of his MVP award last year he obviously should have won it but there was 
a narrative going around in the mainstream media that all oh, black players need to be winning that award more and that you cannot be giving this award to white players because of the fact that basketball is such a black people sport and Nikola Jokic just doesn't fit that narrative so that's why they gave that award to Joel Embiid who by the way should not have won the MVP award and if they were to use the same logic they used last year for Joel Embiid's MVP award then Luka Doncic should have won the MVP award because Luka Doncic led the NBA in scoring this year he almost averaged a near triple double this year he averaged 33.9 points per game which led the league in scoring he also had really good amount of rebounds as well he averaged 9.2 and he almost had double digit assists he had 9.8 assists per game and he also shot the ball really efficiently as well he improved as a defender as well his three ball improved as well in the regular season i know postseason wise it's been awful but in the regular season it was really good what i'm trying to say is it could have gone to any of those three winners it could have gone to nikola Jokic. i wouldn't have had a problem with that it could have gone to shea gilgis alexander i would have been good with that shea gilgis alexander was personally my MVP pick to win that award and if you wanted to give it to Luka Doncic because the standard was already set for Joel Embiid fine go ahead and do that because Luka Doncic had a great year for the Dallas Mavericks now personally would I had a problem if they had picked Luka Doncic for MVP no not necessarily would I have loved it if they picked Luka Doncic to win the MVP award though I probably wouldn't have loved that decision but I'm good with the decision with the voters to pick Nikola Jokic for MVP I personally don't agree with it I think Nikola Jokic should have finished in second place I thought he had a phenomenal phenomenal year don't get me wrong but I thought Shake Hills Alexander had the better year between him and Nikola Jokic because you can't just look at the stat sheet and just say oh this guy shot the ball more efficiently that means he's a better basketball player or oh the player shot more points and scored more points for his team that means he's the better player you can't just look at stats you got to be able to look at the intangibles you got to look at the value that the guy brings to the team and you got to be able to see okay is that team still going to be a good basketball team if you take away that mvp winner because what does mvp stand for most valuable player it doesn't mean best player in the world if we're talking best player in the world then yes absolutely Nikola Jokic should win the mvp award because he's the best player in the world but we're talking about most valuable player and out of the three guys that i presented to you guys shea gilgis alexander is the most valuable out of those three and i know some people are going to say oh what about luka Doncic? shouldn't luka Doncic be number one on your list in terms of most valuable player and I would say yeah that's true too but they also got Kyrie Irving another all-star player who's gonna be really good in the National Basketball Association he had a great year for the Dallas Mavericks and he has been carrying the load offensively for the Dallas Mavericks throughout this year's playoffs in terms of shooting the three ball Luka Doncic as you guys all know has not had a great playoff shooting the three ball now do I think Luka will eventually get his three ball back together absolutely I think Luka Doncic is one of the best players in the world and that he's an absolute baller but at the end of the day though the Dallas Mavericks there are probably a play-in team if they remove Luka Doncic from the Dallas Mavericks now you look at Nikola Jokic if you remove him from the Denver Nuggets the Denver Nuggets are probably going to be a play-in team which means that the Denver Nuggets are going to be significantly dropping off from the number two seed to probably something like the number seven seed in the Western Conference and who knows maybe in a stacked Western Conference that's enough to miss the playoffs in there but I still think the Denver Nuggets are going to be a formidable team in the Western Conference because they do have Jamal Murray they do have have Michael Porter Jr. They do have KCP and they've got other solid role players. I know they haven't shown up in the Timberwolves Nuggets series, but they are pretty good in their own respective right. And of course, you've got Michael Malone, who's one of the best coaches in all of basketball. But if you take away Shea Gilchrist Alexander from the OKC Thunder, does this team even make the play in? Because this Thunder team right now is extremely young. Yes, they got Josh Giddy. Yes, they got Chet Holmgren. But those guys are not experienced compared to the other star players that are residing in the NBA. NBA right now especially in a stacked western conference but for Shea Gilgis Alexander to step up his game and to make other teammates around him better you obviously have to give him a lot of credit and Shea Gilgis Alexander for me personally should have won the MVP award over Nikola Jokic but either way I'm good that Nikola Jokic won the MVP award because I felt bad for what happened to him last year. He should have won the MVP award last year. He should have been the runaway MVP. There should not have even been a discussion for another MVP candidate because Nikola Jokic had a special year last year for the Denver Nuggets. Obviously, the Denver Nuggets, they go on and win the championship. Their first in NBA history. And Nikola Jokic had a great game in every matchup of the NBA playoffs last year. You looked at how he balled out against the Minnesota Timberwolves in the first round of the playoffs last year. 
last year. You look at how he balled out against the Phoenix Suns in the second round of the NBA playoffs. Then you look at the fact how he stepped up over LeBron James in fourth quarters against the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. And then you look at how he had a dominant finals performance against the Miami Heat. And I know that MVP is a regular season award, but you just have to acknowledge Nikola Jokic's greatness in the postseason. And obviously, Nikola Jokic got his avenged MVP award back. He ends up winning MVP this year after he probably should have deserved to win that MVP award last season. So now I guess people are going to find Nikola Jokic even in terms of being able to get wave once. Now he gets to win his third MVP in the last four years. Some people are going to say that he probably should have won four straight. I'm not going to go that far though, but Nikola Jokic, what a phenomenal player. And I know Kendrick Perkins is probably crying in the corner right now. He's probably like, how could Nikola Jokic win MVP once again? I thought I told you guys that white players can't win the MVP too much. But that's just another example of Kendrick Perkins being a trash analyst at ESPN. He's one of the worst analysts that exists out there at ESPN, and he's one of the main reasons why NBA coverage on ESPN is absolute garbage. So that is why I do not agree with Nikola Jokic winning the MVP award this season as Shea Gilgis Alexander should have won that MVP award over Nikola Jokic and Luka Doncic. However, I am good with the selection of Nikola Jokic for the MVP award as he was robbed of an MVP award last season. Remember, go ahead and subscribe to Sports Guy Talking, like the video and please comment down below. If you guys do that, I may shout you guys out in my Instagram story every Monday. That will be for the at Dustin Nash Tran Instagram account. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Dustin Nas Tran and at Sports Guy Talking. Also, go follow me on Twitter at Dustin Nas Tran. Again, go ahead and do those things that I just told you guys to go do. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more Sports Guy Talking, the home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from Sports Guy Talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel. Sports Guy Talking.